Hello everyone, Namaste. This is Mahesh Gaonkar here. Today we are going to learn an important concept in chemistry that is bonding. So today we are going to learn bonding. Bonding. Let us take very simple molecules like oxygen, nitrogen. I think you all heard about this oxygen and nitrogen, right? And the formula of this oxygen is O2. Yes, it is O2. And nitrogen, it's CN2. Correct? So let us understand how bonding takes place in different molecules. Before understanding how bonding takes place between atoms in different molecules, we should know certain basics and they are first one, bonding always takes place between atoms. Bonding always takes place between atoms. Correct? Okay. The next one is why bonding should take place? Why bond formation should take place between the atoms in a molecule? That's a basic question, right? They would have exist as atoms itself. Why should uh, you know bond formation should take place between the atoms to form a molecule? And here is the answer. When atoms of same or different elements combine together to form a molecule, they get stability. So atoms, they combine together to form a molecule through bond formation in order to attain stability. So by forming molecule, atoms get stability. Correct? Fine. Yes, we do agree that when atoms combine together to form a molecule, they'll get stability. That's okay. But the question is, how they'll get stability? Right? Question continues. How they'll get stability? When atoms combine together to form a molecule, they'll get stability by having eight electrons in the valence shell. By having eight electrons in the valence shell. Yes, eight electrons having eight electrons in the valence shell. So whenever any atom has eight electrons in the valence shell, it gets stability. That's okay, you may agree with this. But question still continues. How they will get eight electrons? Correct? How they will get eight electrons in the valence shell? Of course, they will get eight electrons in the valence shell either by losing electrons or gaining electrons or by sharing electrons. So they can have, atoms can have eight electrons in the valence shell by losing electrons or gaining electrons or by sharing electrons. Correct? Fine. These are the basic, I mean, prerequisite knowledge we should have before understanding bonding in different molecules. Okay, first we'll take oxygen molecules. In oxygen molecules, there are two oxygen atoms. Yes, there are two oxygen atoms. Again here we should know the electronic configuration of each atom. Since both the atoms are oxygen, so we should know the electronic configuration of oxygen atom. It is 2 and 6. Correct? And here also it should be 2 and 6. And here we should know only the valence electrons, they can take part in bond formation. Only the valence electrons, they can take part in bond formation. So how many valence electrons are there? 
six valence electrons from one oxygen atom and six valence electrons from another oxygen atom. So all together there are twelve electrons, right? Valence electrons. Twelve valence electrons. Okay. Now we should try to keep eight electrons around each oxygen atom. Correct? That's the idea. Eight electrons in the valence shell. That means every atom should have eight electrons in the valence shell. There are 12 electrons. Between these 12 electrons, we should make each atom having eight electrons in the valence shell. That's the idea. Okay. Now, between these two oxygen atoms, there must be at least one bond. So, there must be at least two electrons between these two atoms. Now, let's try to add the remaining electrons so that each atom will have eight electrons in the valence shell. So, around this oxygen atom, two, four, six, eight, and here, two, ten, and here, to 12. So already 12 electrons over. Around this oxygen atom, yes, it is 8. But around this oxygen atom, it's only 6. But we have got only 12 electrons. Within this, we have to make both the atoms 8 electrons in the valence shell. How can we do that? Very simple. Remove these two electrons from this oxygen atom and put it here. Correct? Now, around this oxygen atom, now, 8 electrons and around this oxygen atom is also 8 electrons. Now, these 4 electrons which are common for both the oxygen atoms, they represent bond. So, now O, we call it as double bond, O and here this oxygen atom has got 2 pairs of electrons. They are called lone pairs. And this oxygen atom also has two lone pairs. This is what simply we write O2. Correct? This is how we understood. Now let us look at this nitrogen. This nitrogen atom has got nitrogen molecule. Sorry. Nitrogen molecule has got two nitrogen atoms. N and N. What is the electronic configuration of nitrogen atom? It's 2 and 5. And here also it is 2 and 5. Here the principle is only the valence electrons are involved in bond formation. So these 5 electrons and these 5 electrons, they can take part in bond formation. All together, there will be 10 electrons, right? Now, within this 10, we have to make 8 electrons around each nitrogen atom. N, N. Now, between these two nitrogen atoms, at least there must be 2 electrons. That means at least there should be 1 bond. Yes. Now, let's try to make 8 electrons around each nitrogen atom. 2 here, 4. 6, 8, and 2, 10. Around this nitrogen atom it is 8, but around this nitrogen atom it's only 4. So how can we make 8 here? Simple. Take out these pair of electrons, put it here. Now around this nitrogen atom it is 8, but around this nitrogen atom it is still 6. Remove one more pair of electrons and put it here. Yes. Now, around this nitrogen atom, it is 8 and around this nitrogen atom is also 8. And this is what we can write like this. N and these three pairs of electrons common for both the nitrogen atoms, they form bond. So, we call it as triple bond here. N, N and each nitrogen atom has got pair of electrons which are not participating. They are called lone pair. And this is what simply we write. N2. This is how bonding takes place between the atoms in different molecules. 
Hope you enjoyed this session. Thank you.